Well, hello everyone, I'm Matt Video Productions, and welcome back to another video. Today's video is going to be a little bit of a shorter one, but it should be pretty valuable information for anyone interested in Dolly 2, and the future of Dolly 2. But, as usual, I open up these videos with an interesting AI generation, and as you guys can see, I got Dolly 2 access, finally. I signed up for Dolly 2 on day 1, and I didn't even receive access normally. Apparently, on day 1, there was a little mix up and some people who applied actually didn't get onto the invite list. So the only way I was actually able to get access is directly through um, OpenAI. Apparently I must have been on that list of people who didn't actually get on the list on day one. But go watch my Dolly 2 access video on how to get Dolly 2 access if you think you're one of those people who was signed up on day one and didn't actually make it on the list. But yeah, Dolly 2 is pretty incredible. This is a dramatic image of a tornado inside of a jar photoshop and i got a lot of really cool variations of this uh image this one was actually a fan prompt this is a close-up of an orangutan eating a bagel watching the sunrise the sun's reflection is visible in the orangutan's eyes hyper detailed and all of these ones actually came out really quite good as you can see he's just sort of holding the bagel up to his mouth watching the sunrise. So yeah, Dolly 2 is really good. It's really good at coherency, it's really good at photorealism. I think on the art side of things, Mid Journey can be better uh, quite a few times. I was directly comparing some prompts last night. This is a really good example. I wanted like an actual mushroom creature and I just got a photo of a mushroom instead. And for example, here is what Midjourney uh, created from the same exact prompt. This is like a mushroom creature, right? And it's still pretty photorealistic, so I actually liked this Midjourney generation better. And there were a few sort of of the same vein of this where Midjourney actually created a more favorable result, in my opinion. In painting is just ridiculous. This is my dog, and I edited a pirate hat on his head, and it looks really uh, realistic, I think. And this was a complete error. So Sometimes this sort of happens with Dolly 2 where you just get a complete uh, failed result. It is not very common though to see that. Here's some more in painting. I really like the in painting feature. But yeah, Dolly 2 I've noticed really just errs on the side of realism. But it is really an incredible tool and I'm very happy to finally have access to it. Especially now because we're going to be able to make some really good videos that uh, surround Dolly 2. Anyways, here is uh, the topic of today's video. Basically, we're going through the Dolly 2 Ask Me Anything on Reddit with actual OpenAI Dolly 2 team members. If you watched my last video, Video. I mentioned that this was going on and it happened. So coming to the first response here, this person asked about the future of this uh, technology in general. And OpenAI said that timelines for this technology are usually difficult to predict and that the field is moving very quickly, which I have also noticed. And Dolly 1 was only released a year and a half ago and we're already sort of at this level which is crazy and they said video is a natural next step so this is coming this is something I was actually wondering about video will be coming at some point in the future but uh, it's very difficult because of its insane size but one of these OpenAI team members believes that video is going to happen somewhat in the near future which is kind of uh, interesting because I actually asked about this on reddit and a lot of people were like oh nowhere even close to that never gonna happen so this person asked, how often are new invites being sent at the moment? And it appears to have increased quite a bit recently, which I also noticed. And how many people in total have access to Dolly 2? So OpenAI said that they invite as many people as they can on a rolling basis based on resource utilization, work volume, trust and safety. And they say they've been getting better at modeling usage and gaining confidence in their safety system. And that's why they've actually been able to accelerate uh, adding new people and they say that they've added 20,000 users in the last seven days which is quite a lot I'm guessing almost 30 to 40,000 people now have access to Dolly 2 which is quite a bit and yeah I can also attest to the fact that their safety system is absolutely crazy I got two warnings generating with Dolly 2 so far I was trying to make a superhero showing off his special attack and I got flagged for that they're like oh this you tried to generate something that's not good just because of the word attack I was obviously not trying to insinuate anything bad, just sort of like a special move for a superhero. And then another one I was just doing in painting of a Dolly 2 generated image of a crowd, and it flagged that I assume because it generated, you know, 
an image of humans, photorealistic humans, so you're not allowed to submit that for inpainting, but it was like a Dolly 2 generated result, so that would be okay anyways, which was it's kind of weird that I got flagged for that. But yeah, Dolly 2's safety system is really crazy. You got to be careful or you're going to get banned, temporarily banned. So this guy asked, are there any plans to improve the current depiction of text, which is a huge one that a lot of people have been talking about, and fingers, which is another, you know, pretty popular conversation. So OpenAI says fine details like fingers are often bottlenecked by the performance of the upsamplers or the upscalers, while spelling more has to do with the limitations of the uncleanness clip approach that was used uh, to sort of generate Dolly 2 or how Dolly 2 generates images. So they say that they're going to address these limitations in future models, which makes sense. Imogen already does text really well and latent diffusion. By the way, a lot of you have been yelling at me because I call Latin diffusion, Latin diffusion where it's actually pronounced latent. So la latent diffusion has been really good at text so far. So Dolly 2, I guess, is going to eventually get better at both of these things. So this is a good question. How many warnings can you get before your account gets suspended? He says that he's already had three and they were honest mistakes in the wording without malicious intent. And I can and say, yes, I've experienced that as well. And he's afraid of trying some stuff and losing his accounts. OpenAI says that they err on the side of being more restrictive as they scale to a lot more people. They promise they're reasonable when they review account freezes. And they say that they've been reinstating accounts when they don't sense ill or deceptive intentions in the user's query history. So hopefully, you know, this means that we're not going to get any stupid bans. And a lot of technology companies have stupid bans. So hopefully no stupid stuff is going to be going on. Here's another interesting technical question. This guy asks, could Dolly eventually create its own reference images? For example, if an image was deemed good enough by real people to put back into Dolly to train on, OpenAI says, yes, they want to train Dolly on the highest quality captioned images, and there's no reason they should include model generated images and they think that if it's good enough rated by people that is the uh, the best metric to go off of and I, I think I agree with this as long as you have good quality generations that are going back in there should not be an issue so this guy down here asked some good questions but I don't want to include the fifth one because it mentions graphic material and I'm pretty strict with my stuff here on YouTube specifically because I'm afraid of YouTube uh, and their policies we're gonna run through the first four questions first question is do you already know know if Dolly 2 will be completely free or if it will cost something and what price models will there be in the latter case or maybe a mix of two like a limited free model or a paid model basically he's asking what's up with the payment situation how's it gonna work I'm just gonna go ahead and censor the word out so in terms of pricing they appreciate the interest in pricing and they know that a lot of people are looking forward to broader access aka more than 50 prompts in 24 hours but sadly they don't have any product updates to share today okay Dolly 2 probably is gonna have some form of paid access in the future but we have basically no information there's basically declining to answer the question Sam Alton on Twitter said that Dolly 2 will be a available soon. Was he referring to Dolly 1 or was that a statement about Dolly 2? OpenAI says Sam was referring to the latest version of Dolly, which is Dolly 2. So I guess Dolly 2 might be available to the public in the near future, which is super exciting. So this third question is a question about applicants, which we've already answered. So what criteria do they make when uh, selecting waitlist applicants? Or is it completely random? So OpenAI says that they prioritize invites based on sign-up time, geographic slash time zone distribution, and learning goals given that they're in a research preview phase. So not much information there, but they definitely, it's not completely random, essentially. If you're like a researcher or an artist, you're probably going to get an invite first, which is what I talked about a few videos ago on how to get Dolly to access. So in the last question, I mean, he basically just asks about AI-generated adult content. Obviously, OpenAI has no interest in that. If you guys are wondering, this guy Whiskey here on the Dolly2 Reddit answers tons of questions, and he knows like more probably than anyone else about this stuff. So he's like, he's got all of the questions 
questions. If you ever have a question about Dolly 2, hit up this guy on Reddit. So this guy asks, what was typing your first prompts and seeing pure magic happen in front of your eyes like? So they say whenever they're onboarding someone, they start with a 3D render of a fluffy dog wearing sunglasses in a blue room. And they like this prompt because it shows a lot of detail and the fluff and that it's always very impressive looking. But I guess a lot of people are very surprised when they hear that they've run this prompt hundreds of times before and they never see the same dog. And for their second question, I guess anyone is eligible and they just ask that they sign up for the waitlist and be patient. So this person asked about thoughts on Google's Imogen and their newly announced party model, which is, I guess, a realism model for Imogen. And they say there's a bunch of questions about Imogen in other labs and they'd prefer not to comment. Yes, Google Imogen is very impressive and it's a very good model. OpenAI doesn't really want to make any statements about anyone else's models. They don't want to get in trouble. So this guy asks again about the um, self-recursive prompts. AI generated art getting filtered back into the system. OpenAI says regardless of the source, if models are capable of generating high quality images, then they think that it should be a part of the training. So this guy says there are some people who signed up on April 6th and report that they have not received access yet. This was, I was one of those people. And this guy says he signed up on April 8th and he says, have some people uh, been effectively removed or rejected from the waitlist? And OpenAI says that people haven't been disqualified or anything like that. And they say that they are doing their best to get people through the waitlist, but no one's been taken off of it. And again, they sent me a message offering access specifically because I stated that I hadn't received access and I signed up on April 6th. So I think they just sort of don't want to state that there was an issue on the first day. But yeah, they're trying to get people in. So yeah, that about does it, everyone. I'll link this down below if you want to take a further look, but that's pretty much the gist of everything that went on with the Reddit Ask Me Anything for OpenAI and Dolly 2. So yeah, I think there's some good answers in there. Uh, you know, I think a lot of people are hoping to hear about pricing, me included. Unfortunately, nothing so far, but it sounds like Dolly 2 is going public very shortly. So yeah, get excited, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Check out a few of my other AI generation related videos. I got a lot of useful stuff in there. So yeah, see you guys next time. Goodbye.